We use add months, date column minus 12, to pick up the same day as last year. But it did not work for us on the leap year just gone by. How do we work around this? You can think this was basically around about March. Someone asked this question because they imagine they had some pain around February 29. Now, I'm going to present you several options for handling this. And I stress none of them you should use. And I'll explain why. Uh, because these are things that we commonly see, and I'm recommending you don't do any of them. So let's explore some of the options when it comes to trying to get two dates that are a year apart. So I'll set a string here, which is 13th of January, 2023. And if I'm looking at the total for the sales table for that particular date, I might run a query something like this. Select the sum of sales, sum of the amount from the sales table, where to date of the variable that's been passed in, it's about $48,000. When it comes to doing the same query across two years, so let's see how this year uh, went compared to last year. I might do a query like this. Take the input string that came from the user and also take the same string, convert it to a date, take away 365 days, which is a year, and life looks good. I get 13th of January for two different years and I can do an ask, compare, and contrast. Looks like sales went down a bit this year. So that all seems fine, but as you can imagine, once you start getting into leap years, we start getting into problems. If the user input was something like 13th of January 2024, then life's good. I get 13th of January 24, 13th of January 2023. This report goes into production. It's all running fine, of course, until next year. When you do the same thing, minus 365, you get 13th of Jan, but you get 14th of Jan for last year. Because obviously 2024 was a leap year and not all years have 365 days. The way people get around this is they use add months, which seems a logical way to go forward to solve all these issues of number of days in the year. We know the number of months in the year is pretty much fixed, never changes from 12. So I take my two date string, I do add months to the date and take away 12 and life's good. For the 2025, I've solved this problem. I've gone from 13th of January and ended up on 13th of January again. What happens though when we get to a boundary kind of or niche condition, an outlier condition? In this case, I'm looking at the 28th of February, which is the last day of February in 2025. When I take away 12 months, I don't get the 28th of February 2024. Add months is defined in the documentation as if you're doing a month expression and that the date you're using is the end of a month, they will always pick the end of the month that is the result of the expression. So when I go back a year, I don't get the 28th of February, I get the 29th of February because this started at the end of the month and add month says you start at the end of the month. So I'll give you the end of a month, even if I have to tweak the arithmetic a little bit. So I'm, I'm back to the same problem. Maybe we can skip the months thing. Maybe we can go to intervals. So let's take 28th of February, 2023 and take away a year from it. Okay, and it solves the problem. See, I went from 28th down to 22. That's good but it doesn't work in all cases. If I start with the 29th and try to take a year, an interval of a year away from the 29th of February, it just bombs out. It's funny how, unlike add months, it doesn't go, ah, oh, that's the end of a month. Maybe you want to go back to the 28th. It simply says, there is no 29th of February, 2023. I can't help you. These are some of the issues you have as problems. Now, all of these are really handling niche outlier or boundary cases. So you could actually work around it with, say, a case statement. For example, if the incoming is the 28th of February, then we could make sure and effectively we're in a leap year, then we could say, let's take away 366 instead of 365 or you know, add months minus one, et cetera. So we could diddle the arithmetic for these boundary cases if we wanted to. And these are some of the ways you could work around these problems just by looking at the problem dates, you know, end of February in particular and adjusting things as we go. Here's why I say none of those things will work, even though that last case statement seems to solve the problem for all the particular dates. Let me look at this example for you. I'm picked 7th of April, 2023, and I'm doing that same comparison you know, for sales across two years. For 7th of April, 2023, my sales were 2,600. Well, that's a catastrophe. Oh my goodness, that's an absolute disaster because it was $44,000 last year. 7th of April 2023 was Good Friday. And pretty much so many parts of the Western world 
Good Friday is very quiet, yeah, in terms of a business sense. E- even in the USA, I don't think they get Easter Monday off, but everyone, just about everyone takes Good Friday off around the world. The moment you say, I'm going to rely on the arithmetic, just lobbing a year off something, you're always going to get these anomalous issues. So my recommendation is, even if you can fix it with arithmetic, don't do it. If you genuinely want to compare two years worth of data, then what you want to do is create a mapping table. Effectively, you want to map a current date with effectively its appropriate date from last year. Now, for the vast majority of those things, they will literally be a one-to-one mapping. First of January on each year is New Year's Day. That, you know, for some countries, that might be huge sales. For some countries, it might be no sales, depending on their holiday situation. But there's a reasonable mapping between the two. For the 2nd of January, well, for me, for the following year, I might choose the 3rd of January because that's the first Tuesday of the new year. That solves things like one day being a Sunday, one day being a working day, etc. And this continues on. For example, this is for the Wednesday. This one I got the Thursday, etc. It might be this one, for example. The 29th of February this year fell on a Thursday. For the previous year, I might choose the closest Thursday because I'm trying to compare, for example, two Thursdays and so forth. For example, for Good Friday, I might be something actually a long way apart because Good Friday falls all over the place. And you know, generally, I want to compare these common things, which are due to some sort of reason. That's what I would recommend. And then you simply do a join. Now, yes, I know that's a bit of work you have to do at the start of each year to do that mapping. But any other form of arithmetic is never going to give you as good a result as that. There are plenty of arithmetic options you can use to overcome any errors and anomalies. But please, just suck it up, take that that hit, and once a year, load up a date mapping table and you won't regret it.